once you diagnose the type 2 diabetes or once you diagnose diabetes as a whole, we must have a pattern to monitor the disease progress and the pattern to look at the control of diabetes. So usually what we do for glycemic control in type 2 diabetes, we may do fasting and post standard blood sugar every month, we may do HbA1c once in 3 months and then in type 2 diabetes lipid profile every 3 to 6 months and complete checkup once in a year including eye, kidney and early detection of microalbuminuria and the heart problem in type 2 diabetes. The cardiovascular risk modification is very important in type 2 diabetes because the cardiovascular problems are very dangerous and sometimes they kill instantaneously and that is why cardiovascular risk modification is important. While in type 1 diabetes, usually after the 5 years duration, we start looking at the complications related to type 1 diabetes and this could be eye checkup, this could be kidney checkup, proteinuria and dyslipidemia and all those complications which we see in type 2 diabetes we start monitoring after 5 years of the duration of type 1 diabetes. First thing which I would like to mention about diabetes mellitus that this is a metabolic disorder characterized by high level of blood sugar in the blood. Uh, usually the stipulated blood sugar levels are like fasting blood sugar should be less than 100 mg per deciliter and 2 hours after lunch should be less than 200 mg per deciliter. Uh, I mean 140 mg per deciliter. Uh, but when you call diabetes, when your blood sugar goes more than 126 mg fasting and more than 200 mg postprandial, then this condition is known as diabetes mellitus. Now, uh, and then another third dimension also has been added to this is uh, the uh, HbA1c or glycosidated hemoglobin which gives you a 3 months average. Normal value in human being is less than 5.8% and if it goes above 6.5% uh, then it is called diabetes. Now that, that makes you wonder that uh, what, what, what is called between the fasting levels of 101 to 125 or 141 to 199 or 5.8 to 6.4. So I would tell you that these levels are like if you have abnormal blood sugar of uh, 106 or something, then it is called as impaired fasting glucose. So we know now that diabetes is a disorder where there are genetic predisposition and then there are environmental factors which uh, uh, makes you more vulnerable to develop diabetes. We have seen over the years that progress and the plethora, I mean the affluence has made the diabetes more prevalent. It is one of the mo most important non-communicable disease and probably uh, we are ashamed to tell that we are also one of the uh, largest population having diabetic patients. So our goal is that Pattern management is also important, but at the same time, prevention of type 2 diabetes is also important. And how do we prevent? So how do we prevent is, first thing is the early detection of diabetes. Second thing, that uh, appropriate diet changes, we use appropriate calories, we cut down because we have a very high glycemic content and we have a very high carbohydrate content in our food at the cost of protein, so we must change our diet pattern and we must cut down on carbohydrates and we should have more proteins in our diet. In view of the cardiovascular complications and as, as we know that Asians are very vulnerable to cardiovascular problems.
the management of diabetes we have seen the uh, um, quite some aspects of diabetes now the management is important here i would like to divide the management in two important subgroups because they are both different like type 1 diabetes management is absolutely depends upon the insulin because they are insulin deficient and you have to supplement insulin as per the requirement of the patient so type 1 diabetes patients they need insulin for the good control of diabetes good quality of life and uh, usually the requirement is around 1 unit per kilogram body weight in all these patients in pediatric group of type 1 patients the second requirement is not only insulin but monitoring the diabetes should be coupled with monitoring of the growth so if you do not give enough of insulin in this group of patients then they may not come to the hospital because of the diabetes complication but when they come to the hospital their growth is stunted so adequate insulin is not only important for glycemic control but for the appropriate and optimum growth of the children is also required and when to talk to you is regarding the symptoms of diabetes Now diabetes mellitus is the symptoms in diabetes mellitus are usually dependent on the insulin deficiency so if you have insulin deficiency and if you are having type 1 diabetes then you usually are symptomatic you have a lot of complaints like polyuria where you have very high frequency of passing urine bad wetting nocturia lot of uh, thirst and drinking too much of water has associated with weight loss so three important things polyuria polydipsia and weight loss is the hallmark of a type 1 diabetes but if you look at type 2 diabetes and if you look at many other type varieties like modi or pregnancy associated diabetes these are the diabetes patients who are usually without any symptoms